Hi everyone, it's Claire from The Planning Guide. Today we're talking about planning for your Disneyland trip for April and May. So whether you're going for Easter or half term, I've done all the research for you, looked at everything you need to know. So come with me as we go through this full guide together. Okay, so as always, we start with our opening times for your trip. And at this time of year, using the official Disneyland Paris app or website, you can see that the opening times are from 9.30 to 11 in Disneyland Park and 9.30 to 8 o'clock in Walt Disney Studios. Magic Hour been from 8.30 to 9.30 in both parks. However, I always say check the app every day before heading off to Magic Hour as sometimes it can change. If they haven't got enough cast members, they sometimes will drop magic hour in one park. So always check that before going out. Now a later close time, so that 11 o'clock marker means that Illuminations is really late at night and Illuminations is always at park close. So at this time, 11 o'clock. I appreciate not everyone in your group is gonna be up for this, but I would plan for it just at least once in your trip. You know, if we're gonna schedule in those breaks for the hotel in the afternoon, maybe using the pool. You don't have to stay at the park all day. However, if you're someone who can keep going all day, you're gonna fit loads in and have plenty of time. But I would say, just be really careful and stagger yourself with all of this. So entry requirements into France and back home to the UK or wherever you're going. Right now, so much has changed in literally the last couple of weeks. I would say, please, please check the official government websites. I've linked it for you here in the document that goes along with this video. Please, please check. However, there are some things that I would still definitely do, even if the website tells you that it's not currently needed because things have changed when people are out on their holidays. So I would still definitely be printing off the paper versions of your vaccination status from your NHS app. You can show the app um, when you're out there, but I would say just have the printed version. Something goes down with internet or roaming on your phone, you're gonna get stuck. So let's just make sure you've got those printed copies. I'm also sharing with you the anti-COVID app here that France use. I would download that on your phone and I would link your vaccinations to this. You can also back them up in your Google wallet as backup. Let's talk closures um, at Disney in this time. And this is a short conversation because this time of year, there are hardly any closures. It's brilliant. Now, It's a Small World is out, but it's out for a long, long time. We don't actually know the date that Small World will come back up. But that is the only big attraction that won't be open for you. Um, a couple of other things like Nautilus, the Pirate Ship and the Robinson Treehouse are closed. But those are more walkthroughs than actual attractions themselves. So, not to worry you are going at a great time okay so what is on at this time and what not to miss so illuminations the nighttime fireworks show came back in february you've got that at park close you've also got the d light show which is the drone show just before illuminations please don't miss that it looks amazing you've got frozen in studios a musical invitation that's in the tune uh, studio theater um although it is a theater it's not theater seated it is more of a stand-up attraction or you sit on the floor so just be aware that's not a nice little rest for your feet if that's what you're thinking you've also got Lion King Rhythm of the Prides this came back in February it's in Frontierland Theatre I'm going to be talking to you about tickets for that later on as well you've got Disney Stars on Parade at 5 30 Disney Junior Dream Factory show also came back in Feb aimed at younger ones but still awesome fun the 30th anniversary show Dream and Shine Brighter is on several times a day. It's on the small plinths that are in front of the castle. So it's not on the castle stage to the right. It's on those plinths, um, which is kind of on that roundabout in front of the castle. 
Let's talk weather. So Paris in April and May can be a little bit changeable, but generally is warmer as we're getting well and truly into spring. Um, the key here though really is layers like most of the times of the year in Paris. Make sure you've also got a really good weather app like AccuWeather I'm showing you here. Really helps you plan your days. I would check this every morning before going out. It's really good at hour to hour predictions as well. So let's get into the plans for your days while you're out there. I have built two plans for you to consider. One is for more Marvel fans with a meal package. One is for princess fans with no meal package. I appreciate there are lots of us who love both those areas, but I thought it would help people if I split them for ease of planning. Now, the biggest differences between these plans are where to eat and what to do with magic hour. So if you're trying to compare the two, those are the biggest things that are different in this so points of note in the marvel plan your studio's day is got to include getting in that marvel meat line really early um, but you miss seeing frozen your first day will include eating dinner at the marvel hotel to really get you in the mood and you will do more rides in tomorrowland in magic hour instead of a rope dropping princess pavilion and points of note for the princess plan, your studio's day needs snacks for lunch because the shows are packed tight together over that time if you want to see them all without uh, staying for a really long day in studios. And your magic hour will include a rope drop to Princess Pavilion. And I suggest doing this the day after your meal at Auberge because at the meal you're going to see several princesses. So if the same princess is on at the pavilion, you may not want to queue again to see her. Although I think the pictures here are brilliant to get. So I also suggest doing the pavilion as well. And also I've added in face paint on the day of your auberge meal to make it extra princessy. Now points of note for both those plans are Lion King show and the 30th anniversary show. Those are in both plans in equal prominence because you really can't miss those at this time of year. Okay, let's talk Marvel plan day one. So this is your arrival day. Um, I've given an example of kind of the main time that the direct train from the Eurostar comes in. But obviously you're going to need to alter this slightly for whatever travel arrangements you've got. But the majority of people tend to get in sort of mid-afternoon. So that's why I have planned it out in this way. And I'm suggesting here on your first day that you grab a lunch on your way in. If you were coming on the Eurostar, I suggest something like the M&S meal deal, which you you can take on the Eurostar. A lot of people aren't sure whether you can take things on there. You definitely can. It's one of the perks. So go ahead. If you do do this, you're going to get in at around quarter to three. So you're going to want to head straight to your hotel. I would suggest uh, taking the bus to your hotel just on your first day. Um, you get a little feel for what it's like to ride the bus. You'll know whether you're happy to do that or not. You can see the distances and you've got your bags with you. So you may as well use the free hotel bus. I would have a quick snack that you've brought with you and then I would head straight back out to the parks, try and get your first bit of Disney in. For this, I would head to the main Disneyland park. You'll be there by about four o'clock and you're going to go in, soak in the atmosphere and just get that app straight out. Let's have a look at queue times at this time of day. Have a look for something that is under 15 minutes and ideally a fast loader. By fast loader, I mean something like like uh, Phantom Manor, or it could be Pirates of the Caribbean. So these are things where a lot of people can get on and off the ride in one go, as opposed to some of the other rides like Dumbo. Dumbo is notoriously slow, uh, slow loader. So don't head there if there is a quite a predicted long wait, because that wait is real. So don't do it. <laughs> After that, you may want to get into position for the parade. Again, parade on your first day is a brilliant way to get into the Disney feel. For this position of where to watch the parade from, I've suggested the position which is right at the front of the park. So... 
There are some random things to have favorites of in Disney. I have a favorite bin and I'm going to share with you this bin. So if you are looking at City Hall, which is on your left when you come in, on the actual roundabout around the kind of the town square area are bins, green bins right up against the curb. If you stand with your back to those bins, you will get a great view of the parade and no one is going to be pushing behind you. That bin is there protecting you. No one's going to be getting in your way or anything and it just gives you a little bit more room I would get there for around sort of five o'clock ten past five knowing that although the parade starts at half past five um, it will get to you there at about quarter to six this means that the parade will probably go by you by six about five past and then you can head out of the park and for the Marvel Day, I'm suggesting you have that at Hotel New York and you go and you enjoy that meal there. Afterwards, go and have a look around the village before heading back to your hotel. Do not overdo it on day one. You've had a long day traveling. You've had some nice Disney experiences, a lovely meal. And now it's time to settle down because you've got an early day tomorrow. Your Marvel Day 2 is your biggest longest day so this is a day all in the Disneyland park you are going to aim to be up for seven um with this plan you have got breakfast so you're going to go and have breakfast at 7 30 in the hotel but it's just a quick one please because you want to be gone by 8 805 at the latest to get to security for 8 15 this means you're going to be at Disneyland Park by 8.25. You're going to be slightly behind the guests who didn't have breakfast in the hotel. They're going to be a little bit ahead of you, but you're still going to be in a good position, so don't worry. On this day at 8.30 at park opening, you're going to head and do a meet and greet. I would suggest Donald. He's going to be on your very left as you go in, in front of the beautiful bookshop. And then you're going to head to Fantasyland and you're going to get rides like Peter Pan, Dumbo and the teacups done. You're then going to want to get in line for a ride that opens 8.30. I would head to Tomorrowland and go for Autopia. So sometimes Autopia is open in Magic Hour, but a lot of the times it isn't, which is why I'm saying you queue up for this is like your extra Magic Hour ride. After that ride, I would head back across into Fantasyland and for about 9.45, head to Mickey's house for the meet with Mickey that opens at 10. Lines for this can get really long during the day, so it is best to get it done and just queue up that little bit early. Then I'd head over to Phantom Manor by about half 10 and experience Frontierland for the first time. And this would put you in a good position to wander on over to Adventureland and have your lunch at Akuna Matata. Now, here, you don't want to be having an awful lot. So if you're on a half board meal plan, you're going to have a really nice dinner later on. You can have it for lunch, but I think it's a little bit of a waste of time at lunch because at this sort of time of day, you can still get on things quite a, a lot easier. So I would actually opt for the kids' meals at Akuna Matata. They're cheaper, quicker to eat, and actually they're going to be filling enough for you. After that, I would head for Dream and Shine Brighter, the show which is in front of the castle. That is on at 12.15. I would get there for 12 so that you are in a good position. After that, you can just hop back to Adventureland. So again, I know you've just come from Adventureland to come to the castle. Adventureland is actually really close. You've just got to have a good look at the map and see the cut throughs. So if you're looking at the map right now, you can see right in the top left corner, that's the cut through you want to get to that castle area from Adventureland. So now as you're back there, you can have a nice play. You've had your lunch, you've watched your show, have a play in the caves, um, walk around that area. If the times aren't too bad for pirates, definitely go on pirates at this time as well. After all this playing, you might want a snack. You might want to come back to Main Street. After that, this is the only bit of the guide I've left in from kind of the February, March sort of time of the cavalcades that are still going on that we think might still go on into April and May. But this is the only one I give you the caveat that it might not happen. But at about 2.20, 2.25, this is often where an unscheduled cavalcade would come out. So have a look for it around this time. I've built it in because you're going to be 
wanting to be on Main Street at this time anyway, because at 2.30, you're going to need to go to City Hall with your MasterCard that you've got, and you're going to go into City Hall and book your Lion King tickets. So what do I mean by this? You're not paying for them, so you're not buying uh, the kind of the 15 euro ticket. You're asking for the MasterCard tickets. There are only 15 pairs of these for the 4.30 show, and you can only get them two hours in advance, so from 2.30. So I would advise being outside City Hall ready for 2.30 to claim your tickets. Once you've got them, then you can go and head and do a few things for a bit of time before about 10 past four, getting ready to head to the Frontierland Theatre to go in for your 4.30 show. Enjoy Lion King, it's amazing. Then at five o'clock, as you come out of the theatre, I would head straight across that um, shortcut that we showed you earlier from Frontierland and Adventureland across the castle to go to Bella Notte. Bella Notte is a restaurant that is almost facing Small World and this is where you're going to want to stand for a parade day too. Now, if you don't want to see the parade again, this is a great time to go and do other rides like Big Thunder or things like that. But if you want to see the parade, it's nice to see it from this point of view. And as soon as it's finished, you can dart off back into Fantasyland and do a couple more things. Okay, after this, your dinner is going to be at Captain Jack's in Adventureland. And that is a lovely dinner. It's where when you go on Pirates, you can see people in the restaurant having their food and the ambiance is just brilliant. This means you're going to kind of leave the area about 7.30, go back to the hotel, have a rest, maybe have a swim, but whatever you do, rest your feet because you are going back to the parks at about 10 o'clock. You're going to head back so that by 10.30, you're in a good position for the delight show and illuminations. You should get out of the park by about 20 past 11. So ideally, you're back at the hotel at quarter to midnight. Okay, so day three is your full studios day. So normal breakfast routine that you did the day before, and then you're gonna be heading over to studios. So remember when you're in that security line, head to your left, not your right, as you move towards the parks. You're going to head to Ratatouille, first of all, which is in Worlds of Pixar. And then you're going to get Parachute Drop, RC Racer and Slinky Done. You're going to manage that all within uh, the first sort of 45, 50 minutes of your magic hour. Now, I'm not advising you go and do the Crushes Coaster line at this time. And the reason for it is I've seen people run really fast, be there really early, and they're still 60, 70 minutes um, in a queue line first thing in the morning, which I just think is a bit of a waste of your holiday. If you are a massive fan and you know you want to get on it, then all power to you and go for it. But I would actually suggest at this time of year when studios is open a bit later, you'd be better waiting until right towards the end of the day and try and crush then which is why I'm saying do Ratatouille first. The only thing with doing Ratatouille first, it does have a tendency to uh, stop working. So have a plan B backed up for your magic hour. Now at about 9.20, run back over from Wells of Pixar to Production Courtyard and have a lovely time on Tower of Terror. After Tower of Terror, you're going to come out and go to the studio, which is just left of Studio One, for your Marvel meet. The Marvel meet starts at 9.45. Do not get there any later than 9.30. If um, you get off Tower of Terror a bit sooner, don't be tempted to go and do something else. Head straight over for this queue line because it is going to be busy. Now, after this, hopefully you're going to be out by um, 10.30. And if you are, I would say go and get an early lunch on in on Kalu's. I know that time sounds early for lunch, but trust me, um, the way the shows work in studios, they, a lot of them are over the main lunchtime period. And you don't want to be eating your lunch when you could be missing out on awesome shows. After this, for 11 o'clock, you're going to head over and get in line for the Stitch show at 11.30. The reason 
reason you need to go for the 1130s because this is the one that is in English. The Stitch Live show is awesome, it is good fun, but if it's in French, it's really hard to understand. And unless you speak French, in which case, fill your boots, go for whatever show time you want. But I would go for the 1130. After this, you're coming out at 11.50. You're literally going to come out of Stitch, turn left and go and get in the queue for the 12.20 Disney Junior Show. And this one, again, is really good fun. But because you're going straight from show to show, this is why you had that early lunch. After this, you're going to be good to go to Toon Studio, do Agrippa Carpets, maybe Radiator Springs. And then you're going to go and queue for the two o'clock Toy Story meet at about 1.45. And then after this, at 2.15, queue for the 2.30 Olaf meet, which is really close by to the Toy Story meet. Now, after this, if you want to stay longer, please go and do the drawing class, which is right by Olaf. Um, if not, and you don't want to do it, go back to the hotel, have a rest, especially if you're going to come back for crush later, this is your time to go. If not, I would stay and do those last little bits in studios. And on this one, because you've got a meal plan, I would go to Chef Remy's at about quarter past five. What a lovely restaurant. The theming is amazing. The food is delicious and it will really end your day so well. You're going to be leaving then by about seven o'clock and you can have a look around the village on your way back to the hotel. So day four is your last day and you're going back to Disneyland Park for this. And this one has a little bit of a Star Wars theme to the morning. So same routine in the morning, having your breakfast, but this time you're going to leave your bags at the front. It doesn't cost you anything to do this. So do go ahead and you just get a ticket to come back and do it later. Heading to Disneyland Park you are going to possibly do one more meet and greet if the queue doesn't look too bad. Um, Stitch might be out on your right as you come down Main Street, so have a look for him. And then head into Tomorrowland. So in Tomorrowland, you can get things done like Buzz, um, Orbitron, Space Mountain. And then for about 9.25, go and get in the queue for Star Tours. So Star Tours will open at 9.30, and if you're in that queue, you're going to be possibly on the first um, load. So that would be brilliant. It means you're going to be out on time at 9.45 to go and get in the Darth Vader meet queue, which opens at 10. But again, if you're in that line for 9.45, you're possibly going to be first or second in to meet him. After this, um, have a good look at queue times. You're going to get to that sort of starting to be a busy time of the day. You might get back on a favourite like Pirates quite easily or possibly Big Thunder as well. Just have a look. After that ride choice, I would head back to Fantasyland and I would go and have the pancake and drink offering at the Windmill Cafe for $7.99. So you can either have hot drink or you can have a slushy. And if you've got little ones, $7.99 for chocolate pancakes and a slushy is pretty good value, especially in Disney. And after that, at 11.45, is the Tigger meet right by the windmill. I would get in that queue for 11.30 so that you're right by the front as well. After this, head back to Main Street at 12.30 to get in the queue for the 12.45 Town Square picture. So because the Town Square area is so beautiful with all the 30th anniversary, that is where they've got a photo pass photographer and you'll get a lovely last day picture. If you need a little pick-me-up, you can go to the bakery, maybe get a Mickey cookie. Those are huge. They're five ninety nine, definitely shareable, but delicious and great in photos if your photos are your thing on your last day. After this, at around half one, I would actually head to the train station. Not as in the Eurostar, don't go back quite yet. Head to the Disney train station and have a last ride around the entire park. So don't get off at any of the little stops. Just stay on it the whole way around. Have a chat with your family or your group about the great holiday that you've had. Now, if you've got a little bit of time or you don't fancy the train ride, I would try and do Fill Our Magic as well in Tomorrowland. This is open between 12 and 5. It's a good last thing to do if you don't want to risk getting on a ride or not waiting on queue times because there's plenty of room in this theatre to go in. You've just got to time it with getting in a show. 
After this, it's going to be about 2.30. You're going to want to go back to your hotel to get your bag or send an adult if you've got more than one adult with you. And then think about going home. If you are doing a journey anywhere from this sort of area to the train station end, I would go into the train station and buy a nice filled baguette for your journey back as well. Okay, let's do the princess version of these days. So remember, this one is without a meal plan. So on day one, I've kept all the arrival things the same. So you're getting to Disney mid-afternoon. You've had your lunch on the way and you're going to be aiming to get into the parks for about four o'clock. Um, I have given you the same suggestion. I would try and do one ride by having a look at queue times, having a look at your app, choosing one thing, doing it, and then go and get in position go back to that place I was telling you about by the bins at City Hall it's just a great place to get some Disney feeling after that I would actually leave the park and I would head to Annette's so Annette's is in the village it's super fun um, great theming really nice food and quite good value really so if you haven't got a meal plan and you want something really nice and filling on your first day Annette's is where I would recommend if you're looking for something more budget I've done a video on budget eats at the parks as well. After a next, you're going to walk through Disney Village, take that all in and then head back for a rest at the hotel. Remember not to overdo it on day one. Okay, so your first full day in the parks, this is your biggest day. You're doing everything from Lion King, the parade, illuminations. You are... Uh, you've got an advantage here because you're not having breakfast at the hotel. So speed is your friend in the morning. Get out of the hotel. Get there for security opening at dead on eight o'clock so that you're one of the first people to get into the park. It really does help with this little section of the day. So when the park gates open, you've got to go in and you're going to meet Donald on your left. And then you're going to go and do Fantasyland, Magic Hour. So Peter Pan, Dumbo, Teacups, Carousel. You've got to come out and you're going to be at the back of Fantasyland. So it'll be easy to get to Pirates of the Caribbean in Frontierland before coming back into Fantasyland. So that's not a lot of walking, I promise you. I know it sounds like you're going between lands, but it's not. And you're going to get in the queue for Mickey Mouse at his house. Get there for 9.45, it opens at 10 and you can get some really nice pictures with him on your first full day. After this, head right back across the park to Phantom Manor and get Frontierland done at about 10.30. After this, think about lunch and I'm suggesting Akuna Matata. It opens at 11.30. I would actually get in the queue at 11.15 because it is really popular. And I, I actually think, I've recommended this a few times, Akuna Matata child-sized portions are fine for a lunch. After this, head back to Fantasyland for face painting. It's near the carousel. Remember, you need to go and get a ticket first from Sir Mickey. So pop in there and then get in the queue for face painting. Try and now get some awesome photos done all around Fantasyland. Pull the sword out of the stone. Do all of those while your little one's got face painting done. You might want to now head to Main Street. You might even want to go to the Cable Car Bakery, get that pan au chocolat. But you are heading for City Hall to get your 4.30 ticket for Lion King at 2.30. So remember, this is what I said about MasterCard tickets. That's what you're getting. You're not paying. You're just picking them up. After this, you've got a little bit of time and then you are heading to that show you've got your tickets for. Head to Frontierland at about 10 past four, ready for the 4.30 show. And then after this, it's your choice. You can either go over to Bella Notte that I described to watch the parade or go and do some of the bigger rides. I would say if this is the day where your little one's got face paint, is maybe in a princess dress or a prince costume or anything like that, you want to watch the parade because the interaction is so much, uh, it's just so much fun when you're all dressed up as well. After this, I would have a six o'clock booking at Auberge. Auberge being your princess dining and have a lovely princessy evening. It means you're going to leave the park at about 7.30. You're going to go back to the hotel, maybe have a little swim, maybe have a rest because you were going back at 10 o'clock to be there for 10.30, ready for illuminations and the delight show at 11 o'clock. Okay, so day three is your studio's day. You are arriving at the park really nice and early. And on this one, I've got the same script for the rides for Magic Hour as you do with the Marvel Day. The only difference here is what you do 
after Majikawa. So you're doing Ratatouille, Parachute Drop, RC Racer, Slinky, then Tower of Terror. Now you're going to head straight over for the queue for the first Frozen show of the day, which is on at 10.30. Do not get in that queue any later than 9.45. If you can do it a little bit earlier, brilliant. After this show, you're going to run across to Stitch, get in the queue at 11 o'clock for the 11.30 English version of Stitch. You're going to have a snack in the outside waiting area. So between 11 and half 11, you're going to have a nice snack that you've brought with you for your lunch because you're doing quite a few shows in a row. At 11.50, as you come out, you're going to get straight in the queue for Disney Junior, which is at 12.20. After this show is when you can have another nice pause and you'll want it by this time. There's loads of snack carts all around studios. So this is the great thing with not having a meal plan. You can go and try all of these different things as well. After that, head to Tune Studios for Agrippa Carpets, Radiator Springs. And now you're going to do a couple of meets. You're going to do 2 o'clock for the 2.15 Toy Story. You're going to do 2.15 for a 4.30 Olaf meet. If you want to stay longer, you're going to do the drawing class, which is right by Olaf. And if not, you might want to head back to the hotel. I would suggest um, for your dinner, if you're leaving early, so around four o'clock, Earl of Sandwich is brilliant, great value. If you leave later between five and six, don't go anywhere near it because it is heaving at that time and you'll want to think of other options. Um, But if you go early, Earl of Sandwich is absolutely fine. You can have a look around the village and then head back because you have got an early start the next day. Okay, so your last day. Again, you're nice and early to the park after leaving your bags at the front of the hotel and you are going to rope drop the Princess Pavilion. So Disney tend to change how they manage rope drop for Pavilion. So I'm going to tell you both ways depending on what's open. When you get down Main Street and you're looking at the castle, if you see a cast member to your right kind of near the castle stage side and they are stood in front of a white rope that means they're going to let you rope drop from that side the princess pavilion in which case stay there if there isn't anyone there and it doesn't look like they're going to open it then you're going to want to go under the castle and they are probably rope dropping that section as well by rope drop we mean there is a white rope in front of you and you're not allowed further past it This is because the queue lines for Princess Pavilion get really big really quickly. So this is about talking to cast members and understanding what's going to be the best way. If both options are open, like I say, go to the right. Cast member on your right and you're going to go past Small World. You're going to abandon your buggy in front of the Small World area and you're going to head straight into the Princess Pavilion. Remember to check outside the name of the princess. Majority of the time, Disney will tell you the name of the princess that is inside. Sometimes they don't, but that is quite a rare thing. After that, um, this will take up the majority of your magic hour. You might have a few minutes to do something like teacups that's quite close by. I would actually come out and head and do something that's about to open, like Star Tours in Tomorrowland. So for about 9.25, head back that way, do Star Tours, then you're in a nice position to come out and do the Darth Vader meet at about 9.45 for 10 o'clock. You might be able to get a little bit more done around Tomorrowland, possibly Autopia. Then you're going to head back into Fantasyland for pancakes and a drink, which is $7.99 at the windmill, so that you're in a really nice position to meet Tigger at 11.30 for 11.45. After this, I would go to Main Street, back at Square, at the town square where you're going to get a lovely picture with all 30th anniversary decorations maybe go back to the bakery get a last minute cookie and then the same thing that i advised in the marvel um schedules as well ride the train it's a really nice thing to do everyone can chill out for a little bit it gives you time to think as well is there anything you need to pick up before you travel back or anything like that if you've got time or you don't fancy the train, fill our magic, get that show in. It's a brilliant way to end your time as well. Don't forget to now go back for your bags, get everything ready, and that's the end of your schedule. 
I hope going through these two different schedules for your holiday in either April or May has been helpful. In the description box, I've put in these Excel spreadsheets so they're totally customizable for you. Um, all the times any of the prices I've mentioned are all relevant to the latest information on the app. The app is absolutely your best friend when you're trying to plan. But like I said, in the morning, I would always have a little check of that app because Disney do change things on occasion. So it's worth just making sure that that meet and greet is definitely going to happen before you get expectations up of any little ones. So with the best spreadsheet in the world, I would always check on the day that your plan that you've got is going to work out okay. I would take a pen with me and just tick things off as you go so that if something happens and it means that a ride is closed or something, you don't tick it off and you know you want to come back and do that a little bit later. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please give me a like if this was any use to you as a video and subscribe to see more. Have a brilliant holiday. See you real soon.